So is my screen is visible to all of you? Yes, sir. Okay. So in the previous class, we are discussing about the spherical coordinate system and the transformation. Okay. So before going to the next part, just uh, uh, I'm highlighting once again. the spherical coordinate system a spherical coordinate system in this system we are discussing about the differential volume element differential volume element right so we have defined the spherical coordinate system in terms of r theta and phi and uh, for the differential element we are going to increment in this quantity r by dr okay r plus dr dr theta by theta plus d theta and phi by phi plus d phi okay so the uh, ultimate change in this are dr d theta and d phi okay so we already have discussed about the pictures so just I'm taking once again so that you can understand it very easily. These are the coordinates for the, the one part of this, you know, you can say. This is a part of this is the dr, right? And uh, you know, this is the r d theta, and this part is your r sine theta d phi, right? So we have taken the different faces based on this. So first faces was you know this one, this faces. I'm talking about this faces. So this was the faces. You can say so r sine theta d phi is the, this one direction was the ar and this is r d theta okay and another is this one this is the r d theta the direction is a phi okay and this one is the dr and third part is your part that is your a theta sir yes sir a screen is not scaring the screen is not scaring sir wait for a minute anyone who have difficulty to see this one the screen Sir, screen is visible. Yes, sir, it's visible. Yes, sir. Now, then, we Okay, based on that figure, we have defined the dv as equals to r square dr sine theta d theta d phi. Okay, we have already discussed these things. And for the differential, for the differential surface area, surface area we have defined three different surface area that depends on the that images, right? So first one is the DSR. So the direction was obviously AR in the direction of AR, you can say. And for the DS theta, DS theta, the direction is in the A theta. A theta, however, in for the D S phi, the direction is obviously in the in the in the in the direction of phi. Okay. So the area is calculated. That is your you can multiply the this side and this side. Okay. So R square sine theta D theta D phi A R. For the S theta, this is the R D R sine theta sine sorry sine theta D phi. Okay. And for the S DS5, this is the R DR 
d theta. So these are, I think, we have discussed. And last one was the differential, differential length vector, right? For the in the coordinate in the spherical coordinate system, that dl is given dr ar plus r d theta, okay, plus r sine theta d phi a phi, right? So this is the differential length. Now we have a one problem and try to solve it by yourself as an assignment problem. And if you feel any problem in order to solve this, you may ask or you can, you can just drop a mail to me for the solution purpose. So the problem is consider the object shown in the figure. The figure is like this one. Suppose this is the one of the part in the cylindrical portion. Okay. This is the one part of the cylindrical portion. So the coordinate of this point is given A, 5, comma, 0, comma, 0, B, 0, comma, 5, comma, 0, C, 0, comma, 5, comma, 10, and point D, 5, comma, 0, comma, 10. These are the point, these are the coordinates given. So you have to calculate for the picture, calculate first part, the length BC. Second, the length CD. Third one, the surface area, the surface area ABCD. Fourth one, the surface area, the surface area ABO. O is the origin, obviously. And fifth part is the surface area, the surface area AOFD. And sixth part is the, the volume ABDCFO. Okay, so you have to calculate this one. So for this purpose, you have to convert this coordinate system either in the rho d phi dz with the help of this parameters, you can convert your system into the coordinate cylindrical coordinate system. So A is given 5, 0, 0. B is 0, 5, 0. Okay. C is given as a 0, 5, comma, 10. And uh, D is given as a 5, 0, comma, 10. Okay. So now you have to convert. So from the R D phi DJ. So you may convert like this 5, 0 degree 0 b is you can say 5 pi by 2 0 you can c you can convert as a 5 pi by 2 comma 10 and d ko aap kar sakte hain uh, 5 okay 0 degree sorry 0 degree and the 10 okay based on this z aapko pata hai d phi angle aapko dekh sakte hain aap ki kitna change ho raha hai hai na 90 degree hai ya 0 degree hai or rho aapko radius pata hai. Uske basis pe you can identify this value and then it is very easy to convert the length or whatever. I just am giving one example. Okay. So I am solving one and another rest of you please solve this one. Uh, okay. So along BC you can simply write that figure. The figure was like this one. This is A, B, C, D. Okay. So along B, C, your D, L is nothing but the, you know, the Z direction. The Z direction that is your x, y, z, right? x, y, 
and Z. Okay. So BC is DL is equals to nothing but the DZ. Okay. So you can calculate the BC. Okay. BC. क्या चेंज हो रहा है इसमें केवल Z चेंज हो रहा है Z एक्सिस. Right. So simply you can integrate with respect to the DL. This is this is varying from zero to ten. A is given as a zero five ten. Sorry, five comma zero comma zero. B is given zero comma five comma zero, and C is given zero comma five comma ten. Okay, and D is given five comma zero comma ten. So here it is only changing in the zero to ten. Okay, so you can write zero to ten D Z, and you can calculate the value. Okay, in similar way along. CD you can calculate the DL. So CD के लिए क्या होगा जी? Yes, please tell me CD. So CD के लिए क्या चुन रहा है? This angle. Okay. So DL is nothing but the row D5. Okay. And the row is given as a five. The radius is radius is five. Okay. Radius is five. So CD is equal to and the angle is changing zero to. Yes, please tell me anyone. Angle is changing from zero to. Pi by two, okay. Pi by two, okay. Then this is row D five. Just to calculate, this one gives us two point five pi, okay. So like this, you can solve all the problem. Now we are going to discuss uh, about the. We have discussed these things, okay. So these are the transformation for the uh, Cartesian to a spherical coordinate. Okay, so this is the del operator. Okay, a r a theta a phi a x a y a z. So you can write a r a theta a phi in the matrix form. Okay, and a x y a z you can convert from this to this like by using this equation. Okay, and in similar way, if you want to transform the vectors from a spherical to Cartesian, you can use this equation. Okay, a x a y a z equal to yeah, equation. Okay, after the multiplication, after solving this equation, you may solve. The distance in all, all coordinates you can solve. D is equal to nothing but the x two minus x one whole square, y two minus y one whole square plus j two minus j one square root over. So this is the coordinates coordinate the Cartesian rectangular system. If you want to calculate the rectangular cylindrical coordinate system, then you may apply this equation: r two square plus r one square minus two r one r two r cos j two minus y one plus j two minus j one whole square, right? And in the case of the spherical coordinate system, you may apply this. Okay. So just you have remember this equation, and you can solve. Okay, if you want to convert the Cartesian transformation from spherical to quad, cylindrical or cylindrical to spherical, you may apply this equation. So this have the you know the the, the derivation of this uh, equation also given in the book, but I think there is no requirement of this. Okay, now I am coming to the different types of the integral used inside the MFT. So first one is the line integral, second is the surface integral, third one the volume integral. Okay. So one by one we are trying to cover. So first one we will try to cover the line integral. Okay, the line most appropriately we can say that this is the line integral, the line integral. Okay, so on the line integral, let's say we have a picture. We have a picture like this one. Let uh, let's say we have a curve f. Okay, we have a curve f, and this f i have this function f has been distributed. Or has been, you know, divided into the n number of the n number of the sector. So the limit is starting from the a, and then it will into the b. Okay, so check out, so check out a to b. Okay, and the length is let's say we have say delta x i, delta x i. Okay. So let's say this this curve is given by the function f. So this is the f x, okay, and this one is the x. Now this is let f x. Now we are defining the function. Let f x be a continuous 
कॉन्टिन्यूस सिंगल वैल्यूड सिंगल वैल्यूड फंक्शन ऑफ एक्स बिटवीन द लिमिट्स एक्स एजुक टू ए एंड एक्स एजुक टू बी ओके नाउ वी डिवाइड द इंटरवल फ्रॉम ए टू बी इंटू एन स्मॉल साइज राइट वी हैव डिवाइडेड दिस ए टू बी इंटू द एन सेक्टर्स दिस वन दिस इज वन ऑफ द सेक्टर नेम्ड एज डेल्टा एक्स आई ओके स्मॉल साइज यू कैन से और यू कैन से स्मॉल सेजमेंट ठीक है एंड द स्पेसिलिटी ऑफ दिस सेजमेंट इज ऑल दिस सेजमेंट आर अप्रोचिंग टूवर्ड्स जीरो ऑल ऑफ दिस सेजमेंट्स approaching to zero means these are infinite infinitely small sectors okay these are the very very small sectors okay so then you can say the line integral then the line integral is then defined is defined in okay in terms of the limit of the sum okay so this a to b fx dx is nothing but the you know the summation kiska sum karna hai ji kiska sum karna hai hame delta fi ka okay what is the delta fi this is the let's say f i th uh, uh, sectors okay so this del this fi this fi is multiplied with the delta xi okay from i equal to 1 to n from i equal to 1 to n okay and also remember in the mind this delta xi this delta xi is this sir class mo this delta xi sir class mo delta delta xi is tending towards the zero as well as also how many is n n n is the this all this a to b sectors all a to b line has been divided into the n different sectors okay and this n ideally it is defined or approaching towards the infinity right then then only this sectors becomes the infinitesimally small value right so in this fashion in this fashion the integral line integral may be defined okay where you can say delta where you can say fi is the value of fx for the segment for the segment delta xi delta xi such that such that delta xi tends to zero any doubt anyone any have doubt no can you proceed further yes sir okay so it means it means now try to extend this discussion let's say we have a different curve from a to b okay let's say c is c is the curve and now this is the o we are taking the reference point okay and let's say we have directed this as a ri ri vector the position vector to this point okay and let's say for the delta li delta li the small increment we have taken this as the another direction that is the r i vector plus you can say delta li this will represent right so the this again from the same concept we can define fdl vector okay fdl vector as a limit n tends to infinite or delta li tends to zero 
okay we can multiply the or in, 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 we can take the sum of the fi to the delta li okay where i is tending from 1 to n is there any doubt no so so now just defining defining our scalar line integral line integral for a vector field for a vector field f okay and what is this let's say this is the f dot dl vector f dot dl vector as equals to what limit n tends to infinite and delta li is obviously equal to tending towards the zero and summation of what i equal to one to n f vector dot dl vector sorry delta li vector delta li vector okay delta li vector and for the vector line it is a scalar line remember this is a scalar line integral a scalar line integral lifting once again this is the a scalar line okay and now come to the next that is the vector line vector line integral of a vector field of a vector field f vector along path c is defined as kya ho jayega koi bata sakta hai anyone f cross dl vector right if you ask the f cross vector line vector line integral and the scalar integral is, is given with the dot product however the vector line integral is a cross product okay so same funda fundamental we can utilize and define like this one del limit del n tends to infinite delta li tends to zero summation of fi okay fi is missing here fi vector cross dl sorry delta li vector and i is varying from i equal to 1 to n okay this is the concept all right these are the concept for the this one okay now come to the this one so if your this is a line integral in the slide the line integral is shown so we have this con it may be the closed line or it may be the open line okay so the line integral line integral a dot dl is the integral of the tangential component so it represent what tangential component right it represent the tangential tangential component a line can exist as a straight line or t can be distance traveled along the curve thus in general from mathematical point of view a line is curved path in a space right so how it is defined it is defined like f dot dl okay f dot dl is nothing but the f dl cos theta okay where we had what is the dl dl is the elementary length dl is the your elementary length okay it may be the open path it may be the closed path okay if the open path let's say we have the p to p to r if it is p to r right then we can write only the f dot dl f dot dl from p to r right if it is a closed path then we we can use as a contour it is like this one if it is a closed path circular integral then we can use a contour or closed integral okay the closed path is also called a contour the corresponding integral is called the contour integral it is very important contour integral or the closed integral or circular integral right right so uh, what it represents it represents if there exists a charge okay if there uh, the this integral represents the circulation of the vector field around the closed path circulation of the vector field around the closed path let's say we have there is this any any charge along this line then it means the total charge obtained by calculating the line integral whatever the charge is distributed over this line then only you can obtain the total charge by integrating by applying this line integral over this curve okay 
right now come to the surface integral okay just before going to that we have a numerical problem see let uh, we have uh, if a vector is equals to 4x plus 9y sorry 9y a x vector minus of 14 y z a y vector plus 8 x square z a z vector right so calculate evaluate the close integral or line integral a vector dot dl vector from p equal to 0 comma 0 comma 0 to q equal to 1 comma 1 comma 1 along the following points along the following paths right so the what are the following paths the question in the question given x equal to t y equal to t square and z equal to t cube part b is the, the state line the state line from 0 comma 0 comma 0 to 1 comma 0 comma 0 then to 1 comma 1 comma 0 and finally it reaches to and finally to 1 comma 1 comma 1 so line integral pehle yahan se 0 0 se aa gaya and then moving to this and then move to this okay and part c is the the state line the state line joining direct p 0 comma 0 comma 0 okay 0 comma 0 comma 0 to you can say q 1 comma 1 comma 1 okay so see the solution problem how this will be solved so first try to draw this line okay the moving line how they are going to move okay so for this purpose just we are drawing the rectangular coordinate system let's say this is the x this is the y and this one is the z and first it is given it is it is the first coordinate is 0 comma 0 comma 0 obviously that is represent origin 0 comma 0 comma 0 and then it moves to the 1 comma 0 comma 0 so 1 comma 0 comma 0 represent the x axis variation in the x axis that is the this point okay so 1 comma 0 comma 0 and then it moves to the 1 1 0 so 1 1 0 means x coordinate and y coordinate both are the changing so first goes like this one okay and then it moves to this point okay that is the 1 comma 1 comma 0 okay and then it moves then it moves to the 1 comma 1 comma 1 so 1 comma 1 comma 1 means x y z all the coordinates are going to change okay so this is the p point and this one is the q point okay and this point is nothing but the 1 comma 1 comma 1 so ultimate change is this this line joining the line joining p to q is this one okay this one p to q so one of the line c represents this line however b represents this to this to this okay this direction from first for coming from point p uh, let's say this is the c1 curve let's say this is the c2 curve and let's say this is a c3 curve okay so now we are calculating one by one so first one is your a vector dot dl vector right a vector dot dl vector so a vector is given as a 4x plus 9y dx minus 14yz dy plus 8x square z dz right what is dl dl is dx plus dy plus dz when dl 
dl वेक्टर इज dx ax वेक्टर प्लस dy ay वेक्टर प्लस dz az वेक्टर व्हेन इट इज मल्टीप्लाइड बाय दिस a वेक्टर देन ax डॉट ax बिकम्स 1 एंड इट बिकम्स 4x प्लस 9y dx एंड लाइक दैट ओके now it is given because it is given x equal to t, y equal to t square and z is given as a t cube. Then based on this equation, dx become your dt. However, dy becomes 2t dt and dz becomes, you can say, 3t square dt. 3d square dt. Now you can place all the value of x, y, z, dx, dy, dz in this equation and you can solve the problem. Is it any problem? If you have any problem, you may ask. Okay, so you can put this value and find out the line integral a vector dot dl vector that is okay. And what is the value varying? Okay, you may find so t equal to 0 to 1. You can put the value and find out the uh, value okay, xyz. So after putting all this big value you will get 40 plus 9t square minus 28t power 6 plus 24t to the power 7 dt okay and when you solve it will you get with 4. Tick. any problem so this is the a dot dl so this is the this is the answer for the problem number one in similar way you can calculate first by calculating the curve the line integral for the cl uh, c1 curve a dot dl right so how it will be calculated the c1 is moving from you know uh, y equal to 0 to uh, z equal to 0 so you can say here the only the variation is in the x x 0 to 1 okay so you can put all the value and you can find the answer okay in similar way for the c2 curve for the c2 curve the y is varying from 0 to 1 and from the z for the c3 curve the z is varying from 0 to 1 okay so in this way you can find out and add up all the line integral c for the c1 for the c2 and for the c3 and it will come 6 it will come around the 6 answer right right so just try to solve and in a similar way, you can also find the point P002, you know, 111. Okay. Now come to the S surface integral. For the surface integral, we have time. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you. So much. So, okay, we have 10, ten minutes. Okay. For the surface integral, the surface integral. Okay. For the surface integral, let's say we have the contour like this one the surface integral okay and let's say this is the surface s and uh, we have divided these surfaces into the n different surfaces and each surface that this is small surface i have named as a delta si okay uh, i have just taken this uh, as a delta si okay this one is a delta si and the direction obviously the sur it is a surface so surface of the direction in the upward direction in the outward direction sorry 
so you can write down the direction of this one is a an since it is the i ith element so we can write as the ani okay delta si okay the direction of this surface is ani delta si so to define the surface integral the surface integral of a scalar field of a scalar field f or a vector field f vector we again divide we divide the given surface the given surface into surface s into you can say a large number large number n of n a small surfaces and again each small surfaces tending towards zero limiting towards zero approaching towards zero so these a small each surfaces or these each small surfaces you can say a small surfaces limiting towards or approaching towards zero limiting to zero okay then and also each a small surface delta si has a corresponding corresponding vector surface right hoga hi hoga vector surface that is the delta si vector right kyunki iska direction bhi hai upward direction mein outward direction mein right so to define to define the surface integral to define the surface integral of f right we just multiply we multiply f by each surface by each element or surface you can say and sum pure ga lena hai aapko to ek ka apne nikala delta f i delta s i okay f i into s i f1 s1 f2 s2 f3 s3 and add kar diya total ko so then it will give the total surface area surface integral right so uh, sum it for all the n elements of s okay in the limit and you know what is the limit the limit is delta si delta s tends to zero as n tends to infinite okay because the a small area this is the area this area representing the infinitely small area right because why because n is the number of the sector is defined as a approaching towards the infinity so this limit is called surface integral right surface integral of f over s okay and it is defined as and it is and how it is defined it is defined as it is defined as yes it is defined as delta uh, sorry line in uh, surface integral surface integral of what f over ds okay and it is calculated by again fi delta si okay delta si and limit n tends to infinite however delta si tends to zero and limit i is ten, changing from i equal to 1 to n and this one is nothing but the surface integral okay so you can generalize this equation generalize to this equation okay and you can write in one term for the scalar for the scalar the surface integral is defined in terms of f vector dot ds vector it is nothing but the limit n tends to infinite delta si tends to zero 
summation of i equal to 1 to n f i vector dot delta s i vector right and for the vector surface integral with the scalar surface integral scalar surface integral however for the vector surface integral for the surface integral this is defined as the integral surface integral of f over ds vector okay sorry cross this is a cross product because it is a vector surface integral right is defined as a limit n tends to infinite delta si tends to zero but the change the change is only occurred in the cross product instead of the del uh, dot okay so this one is the vector surface integral and this one is the scalar surface integral right okay so last one is the volume integral and in a similar way okay so i think time is not in any so we will discuss tomorrow on the next lecture the rest we will discuss the next lecture right